All right, cool. Cheers, Ryan. Thank you for giving some of your time. Yeah, thanks uh, for Obviously, you're, you're fighting on Friday, but the uh, yeah, yeah. idea is to kind of get to know you and what have you. Obviously, you're your four-man prospect. So, yeah. so let's, let's start from the beginning with you. Um, how long have you been boxing and what, what got you into it? Uh, I've been boxing around about... I've been boxing around about seven years now. Um, what got me into it was really just... Long story short, you know, it's something that it's always kind of been recommended that yo you should always get into box, get into box. You know, I was always fighting in school. You know, always always doing a little bit of a little a little terror. So yeah. telling my dad, yo, get into box. Mom kind of not wanting me to box, and then I just got old enough and said, you know what, this is what I want to do, man. Let's do it. And I walked through the gym, and I ain't turned my back ever since. You know, and I love it. I wish I started when I was like nine, ten, with like everyone else did. Yeah, a lot of kids do start really. Yeah, early, start really early. Yeah, yeah. And when you walked in for the to the gym the first time, was that your decision? Was it your parents? Yeah, it's my decision. Yeah. Literally, I woke up. I was, I was of, of, of age, and I was like, you know what, let's do this. You know what I mean? And it was weird how it just clicked, and how I just woke up, and it, I just had that, that 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 thing in my head, and I just absolutely went for it. And like I said, when as soon as I stepped through the, the doors of the gym, and I got a taste of it, I can't even explain it, you know. And I just love it, you know. I love it. What gym was it that you set All Stars. Oh, uh, over uh, Harrow Road. Road. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so I was there around the times when I started when Phil Fane had his uh, Lonsdale belt, yeah. defending it for the second or third time. Really? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So that's obviously quite, you know, someone to look up to, isn't it? You know, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. And it was very, very good, you know, to see see a, see a champ, um, go see him go through his camps mm. and. You know, defending this belt, and he had a belt, and I've never seen a belt, so it was a good first experience. And he's a nice guy; he always, always there, giving words of advice, and you know, he's never too, mm. too big to talk to anybody, you know. And he's just one of those people's persons. So, yeah, respect to him, hundred percent. When you set foot into the gym, yeah. Did, who did you speak to first of all? Was it, you know, was it one of the trainers or Mr. Mr. Akai? Yeah, Mr. Akai, man. Literally, I'll never forget the meeting I had with him. Uh, and he just wanted to kind of, it's his thing, he wants to get a feel of, yeah. of you. So he sat me down in his office and just wanted to talk to me, you know. I was a bit older than the rest of them, so it's like, why, why do you want to be here? You know, seeing like what my intentions are and stuff, because starting at my age, they consider it, oh, well, you just want to do it to keep fit, right, right, you don't really want to. So it was kind of like interrogating me a bit one-to-one, -one, and after we finished speaking, he just turned around and said, oh, you remind me of my son. Because his son is the same age and same sort of way, he's like, yeah. And then, yeah, so he was my first ever person I spoke to. He kind of took you under his wing and then showed you kind of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the yeah. rights and wrongs. And mm -hmm. when, um, how long was it when you were training before you had the first uh, amateur fight? I was training around about... Just under a year. It was just under a year. You know, and um, they wanted him to have a fight much earlier than that, but my pops was kind of, he's always the overseer and he's like, Nah, we want the debut to be proper. We want it, we wanted to step into the game properly. All these little we wanna fine tune things some more. So he's he waited maybe 10, 11 months and then uh, wanted me to do it. Yeah. And I actually thought my debut was on his birthday. My debut was on his birthday. So great time. Yeah. Yeah. I have 24. 24. Mainly competitions. Most of them was overseas. Okay, I didn't, yeah, I, I didn't really do my amateurs in England. Oh, well, I was in Canada and, and America for my amateur, for most of my amateurs. I uh, done the Haringey Cup. I won that as a novice, and then from there, I just I went overseas and I, I continued my journey there and. Yeah. Do you feel that kind of going overseas was a yeah. good, good thing for you as in, to get away from kind of everything in the UK and yeah. see how it all kind of set up is different when you're going to the gyms out? Yeah, yeah, pros and cons definitely. Um, it's not easy being away from home and, and having to do that, you know, but when you wanted to do something, it's like you just put your mind to it. So, yeah, you know, and it was a real test of my character and how much I really did want to do this. Mm. and. On top of that, I was overseas, so that stuff builds you. All, the, all of those experiences build you. Being in, you're always away from home, you're always the away fighter. You know, it's cold in Canada, it's like minus 32, like, no, you know what I mean? So, just so many things to adapt to and um, different training, different people do things differently. So, I have had a good variety of coaches with 
different styles and and yeah, so I just I just pick up things where I go, you know, like a thief. You know, I go in there and just take little things and then get off. When you um, when you turned pro, like whose decision was that? And, you know, how did you kind of come, come to that? When I turned pro, it was a joint decision uh, with my pops and Lennox. So how old, was, you, how old were you? How old were you when you um, turned pro? Like official like signed twenty five. 25, yeah, yeah. So I've been a, I've been a pro two years now. So I'm yeah. 27, 25, and uh, yeah, it was just a joint did you decision. Did always want to turn pro earlier? Or was yeah, it, was it like I did. It was very frustrating, you know. But to be honest, I had I had good people around me that I felt like they knew us best. You know, to be honest, you know, I was I was in good hands, and you know, if if someone. If someone like Lennox is saying, listen, he's been there, this is the man that's been. So if he's saying to me, you're good, you got it, but do this, work this way. I can't turn around and act like I know better. So I, I, I did, it was frustrating, because you know, I just want to get the ball rolling, but I listened to him and I don't regret it. I don't regret waiting or anything like that. Perfect timing. I think it's easy to jump in and make decisions for yourself rather than you know someone out looking in the outside looking in is, is better better place because they, they see it. They yeah. Have That's what I mean. It's like you know someone of that caliber, and then also you got my pups, and that keeps you grounded too. So you know you might you know you're young, you you run around before you can you know what I mean before you can walk or whatever, but yo walk properly and. You know what I mean? Just get everything right. So I was just like, alright guys, you guys know what's best. Yeah, I'll take I'll take this I'll take direction. What was it like uh, fighting on your debut? Um it was a great experience. You know, it was on Lennox's first ever pro show over in Niagara Falls in Canada. And you know, just the whole the build up to it and you know people wait wanting to see me because obviously it's like, oh you're the pro J this that and the third and and I was always waiting for it, so when it came around, I was buzzing. There was just a big buzz around it, and it's a different kind of thing. You know, amateurs is good, but then when you're in the pros, it's, it means it means like it means something. So were you the home fighter in the? I was never the home. I was the home fighter according to the. Yeah. You know how to do the promotion. There's a there's a home team. No, 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 no. No, That's I just one had less to. One less stress, and that is one thing that when I, when you come London, and yeah. when I was in England, because I, I had moved up, I moved back down and went up to Manchester. So, then you get that reality where, oh man, now you gotta sell tickets. Now, now your purse depends on your following. There's so many small little intricate things that. You know, it's quite stressful really, because you want to concentrate on training and potentially your opponent. Yeah. You've also got to get on social media and try and... Ah, you know, you've got, you got to be a certain type of way. You've got to be a got to go around and it's like, oh man. You know, you just want to get in there and be like, yo, this is, I, I fight, man. Yeah. You know, but nowadays you've got to be the full package. You've got to have the personality, yeah. you've got to have the following, you've got to have this, you've got to have that. You know what I'm saying? And on top of that, you've got to be able to fight. It's like, it is a full-time job. It really is a full-time job, man. What was your um, first ring walk song? Canada, when you made your My first what, sorry? Uh, song, ring walk, entrance song. It was, um, it was uh, by Mob Deep, it's called Shook Ones. Um, just, I like old school songs and you know, you get that. You know, certain songs take you back to a certain time and I would just never, like, Prodigy, that, that, sort of, that sort of era, that Mob Deep era, that Wu-Tang era, I just, that, that gets me going, you know, the Dr. Dre, the old school hip-hop era is just... I was just looking, I was watching the, um, the series on Netflix that you're Yeah, yeah. Up in that area as well. I've heard of it. I haven't actually given it my time yet, but yeah, I heard it is good. I heard it is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will, I will, I will eventually get around to seeing it. Definitely. Um, after you uh, debut, what have you? Did you watch it back? Were you critical on your performance? Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I, but that's just me in general. You know, what was I, the I, from, from, from the uh, everyone loved it. You know, everyone loved it, they, they loved the performance, but me, I'm just like a real harsh critic anyway, so I looked at it and I was like, yeah, that was good, but then what sticks with me is always, always the bad things, they would always stick with me and I'm like, I oh, can't let that happen again, and what had happened was, I'll tell you, 
I had the guy's number the whole time. But when I dropped him, I threw a straight left and he threw a jab. But obviously my force was greater than his. But he hit me with the jab. So even though I hit him with the left, it looked like we, we both hit each other at the same time and they looked clumsy. And that really bugged me, man. So that, that was one thing I was like, man, like, because the whole time, you know, you're, you're training, you're practicing, move your head out the center, move your head out the center. And it's like, oh, for goodness sake, man. When it, you know what I mean? When the camera's on, you know what I mean? All you had to do was what you've been repeating. And, uh, just, are you conscious as well about people that are watching? Like, are, you, are you, you know, are you conscious that you want to put on a show? Because, you know, some say it's an entertainment and some say, you know, it's a sport. So it's like, are you conscious to try and entertain people? Are you there to feel yourself? It's like, no, I need to be described whether it's good There's, or it good or... It's like a split thing because I definitely want to be there to entertain. But first of all, I'm there to win, you know? But... You're so on early on in your career, it's, you don't have any really early setbacks because yeah. especially as a prospect, yeah. get an L on your record early yeah. on. It's, yeah, that, and that's, that's, one hor uh, that's one horrible thing about boxing in itself, you know, that the emphasis on the O is so, it's so harsh, you know what I mean? It's like, there's great, name a great fighter that hasn't taken a, an L, but nowadays they put so much emphasis on holding the O, I, I get it, it makes it stink a, bit, a little bit. Until you're about five, five and zero, mm. and then once you start setting up, I think, you're right, there's too much emphasis, you know, uh, big fights not happening because they don't want to lose their L, and stuff. Yeah, man. So, I mean, I, I'm a big MMA fan, so it's like, you know, MMA is just completely different. It's, yeah. And yeah. I don't, there's only Khabib I know that really is unbeaten. That's at that high mm -hmm. stand. Yeah, man. I can see potentially going unbeaten. But everyone else is taking over. Like Conor McGregor, one of the biggest stars in the world. Exactly. Three L, so it is. Exactly. I think, you know, you've not got to be afraid. And, and even AJ said it took him an L to kind of a bit of relief in a way. Do you know what I mean? To, like, to understand. It's, it's, it's not even realistic to, to try and aim for. You want to be to be unbeaten. That's okay. That's cool. You're, you're unbeaten, but wouldn't you also, you know, it's 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 a journey. It's a journey, man. And if you dare to be great, then you might you might fail a few attempts. Like, what are you gonna like? What are you meant to do? Now are you now worthless or where are I? It's like, nah, man. It's it's a part of the journey, and it builds a character. You know, everyone everyone loves the underdogs. Everyone loves that that story when you're you fight through that that level of the adversity and you know the the he is on you. Like AJ, you know what I mean? When he comes back and hopefully wins this fight. Mm -hmm. Fans will love him again. But look how they treated him when he lost. Jeez, you know what I mean? It's mentality, isn't it? It threw him in the fire, yeah. man. It was like, yo, like. Think, <laughs> Brits um, do love an, an underdog. When the underdog gets to the top, it's then they kind of like, you know, oh, want them to kind of not succeed. Well. There's a great saying in the, in the gym over there is um, everyone loves to try until they succeed. Mm. It's true. You know what I mean? They love you, and then when you succeed and they start looking at you, they not, it's like, mm. You know what I mean? It's like they're looking at themselves and it like like it's a sort of uh, I guess a certain bit level of bitterness. I don't know what it is, but it's like you know what I mean, well, you do it. You know what I mean? I can do it, why don't you? Absolutely. You know what I mean? How do you relax outside of the outside of boxing? Do you do work? Do you are you full time? Yeah, I'm full time boxing. But um you know, make money here and there part time. You know where I can, but I try not to compromise my my training hours, and you know I always want to put this first. So even if it's not great income on the other side, it's still maintenance. It allows me to be able to sit here and keep my head in the gym rather than be stressing. Ah, oh, this time the. Uh, what kind of outside of boxing in the gym? What what um, relaxes you? Like? Chess. Chess. Love chess. Might not be the greatest chess player, which I will admit, but chess is so. Chess is just my dad always beautiful chess game. As a young age, and it's like, I'm so glad I'm kind of uh, beautiful you know, game. Yeah. Like just the whole the whole mindset, the whole art to it. It's, and it, and to me, it's boxing as well. It's life. It's everything. Mm -hmm. Put everything on a chessboard. You can, you you can like break it down. Ahead, aren't you? Yeah, man. What decisions are you gonna make? It's all about choices. You know what I mean? You put it in reality. It's choices. You make a choice. What's the, what's the outcome? What's the consequences? Oh, you make that choice. What's the lesser evil? Okay, you make that choice. You get that decision. I right, don't want to do that. Go here. You go here. That's beneficial. You might take an L here, but then you know you set up. You set yourself up 
to really succeed and to conquer, you know. So I think Alex Lewis always like, kind of made the semi finals, oh, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like chess. He implemented chess in, in me. Yeah. That's why, like, like, I was able to stay with him and I lived with him for um, mm. quite a good period of time and travelled with him. Every day we play chess, every day we play table tennis. Mm. Two sports. Hand-eye coordination for the table tennis mm. and chess for the mind. And he was just like, and he is, like, he is like, Lenny. his level of chess is like, like, if you, you know what I mean, he's like that, that, so, play, when you play, it's just like sparring, when you're sparring with world class people, mm -hmm. then you start to play with other people, you're like, ah, oh, this is easier, but when, when you it's, it's tough, tough lessons. Uh, ladies, was he talking boxing as well? Or is talking boxing, talking everything, and sometimes just saying nothing can make you think, mm. you know what I mean? Taking away his queen and, and taking liberties and beating you, you're like, ah, oh, man, Jesus, you know what I mean? I need to step up, so, yeah. you know, but... Yeah, definitely. Um, chess relaxes me. Um, I like to I like to do small things. I, I draw and create. You know what I mean? Like, you know, might draw some stuff or something. Just keep my mind at peace. And you know, sometimes when you're boxing, everything can be hundred miles per hour. But small things that keep my mind occupied. You know, do yoga sometimes. That's cool. You know, it's good for the body. So. Yeah. Anything other than that, I can't really think off the top of my head, but those are the main yeah. things. You know? still keep in contact with Lenny? Yeah, on and off, on and off. You know, he, well, he's an overseer, he's doing his thing, and you know, he's uh, he's only a phone call away. And, yeah, definitely. Um, shout out to uh, everyone supporting me, man. You know, really and truly. You know, it's, it's a lonely road, it's a lonely sport, so everyone that's in my corner, you know, the people, they know who they are. They, they get in touch with me and they always want to support, even if I'm overseas, they want to know what's happening. So, you know, the people that show me love, definitely. And my social media, you know, uh, it's uh, Instagram is Conquering Lion. All I have is Instagram. Or Conquering is spelled C N Q R N, Lion. You know, so just, if you just not get that confused. And, yeah. Well, best of luck with my day again. Thank you very much. Yeah, hopefully we'll catch up for a post-fight interview as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome, thank you. Thank you,